Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Office Bloke Daz. Office Bloke Aiden. Here we are, Office Bloke Daz Sports Edition. If you like what you're seeing, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, please. It does help us. Thank you. Um, do you know who Arch Manning is? I was going to say, like, either Eli or Peyton's son. It's the nephew um, of uh, Eli and Peyton. And it's, I think he's, the, so I, think he's like, the, I think he's the quarterback for Texas. I didn't know there was another brother. Um, I'm not sure he's Manning into, family. I don't, I don't think he's, in, I don't think he's a, a star player like they were. I think he might have played college, but then I think he went on to a different career. Mm. But um, I think Archie's at the, uh, he's, at, he's in Texas. He's the what, is, it, is Texas. his name Arch? I guess Arch, yeah. Archie, Arch, maybe. Archie, Arch, Arch. but he's, I only know him as Arch Manning. I've, only, I've not done anything about him as such. I read about him about two weeks ago, and I thought, Arch Manning, and the first question I thought of you is, is that Eli Payton's son? Mm. And I thought, he's quarterback and he's coming through, he's obviously got good pedigree in the family. Yeah. Sort of thing, sort of thing, but he's the nephew. I see. I read the story, it was his nephew. Still anyway, quite cool though. How Still good is Arch Manning actually? Let's have yeah, a look. Let's go. As part of the third generation of football's most famous family, Arch Manning became the most sought after recruit in college football history. One school wanted him so badly that they spent over a quarter million dollars on a two day recruiting visit. But is all the hype surrounding Arch warranted or nothing more than the product of his last name? While everybody associates the Mannings with football, their family actually has a strict ban on playing the sport. The steward of the family, Arch's grandfather and former NFL quarterback Archie, decided that none of his sons would be allowed to play tackle football until it was offered in school. I, I wouldn't let them play tackle football, so they had to wait till junior high to play football. And even with all the advancements in player safety over the years, Arch's dad, Cooper, refused to make an exception for him. So, up until middle school, Arch was only allowed to play flag football. It's fair to question whether this decision would stunt his development as a player, but football's in Arch's blood. He attended the same school both of his uncles did, Isidore Newman, a prep school in New Orleans. And by the spring of his eighth grade year, Arch was already practicing with the varsity team. Him being out there at such a young age was not just a move designed to generate publicity or show respect to the Mannings. Newman's head coach, Nelson Stewart, even said, as Arch started here in middle school, I think everybody's goal has been to just give him as normal a life as we can. But it was immediately clear that he belonged on the field, regardless of his age or last name. In fact, Stewart still remembers the first time Arch took a snap at the first team offense. On that play, Arch noticed that the defense was shifting from a cover three scheme, with corners and safeties protecting the deep thirds of the field, to cover one, with all but a safety playing man to man. Arch checked at the line of scrimmage and fired a 50 yard touchdown pass. This level of poise and presence from such a young player was so uncommon that it blew away anyone watching. It was also the main reason why Stewart felt comfortable enough doing something with Arch that neither Eli nor Peyton had done back in their day. Arch became the first freshman quarterback to start Newman's season over opener in over 40 years. Up until that point, his family had tried their best to keep him out of the spotlight and let him have a normal childhood. But once he was named QB1, everything changed. That year, Manning exploded onto the scene, throwing for nearly 2,500 yards and 34 touchdowns on his way to being named Max Preps National Freshman of the Year. There was no hiding from the media anymore, as everyone wanted to hear what he had to say. After that season, Sports Illustrated even featured him in an article, an honor reserved for only the brightest and hottest prospects. And the media were not the only ones who desperately wanted a Piece of the Imagine earth. the pressure on you there, though, when it's articles. I was gonna, yeah. The family name. Yeah. Continuing the family name. Yeah. It's like you when you went to school, having to sort of like live, live up to that name. Get your name on the back of a shirt. Huh? Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> but what you've got as well is, um, see, it's kind of a similar story to you when you went, when you went playing rugby. And you went to, for, for those who don't know, Aidan went to a rugby school, right? Yeah. So he goes in, never really playing rugby. He played a little bit, didn't you? But not much. I've never played. Oh, you've never played I've played school. touch rugby. Right. I've never played contact. Right. So you go into the school, into the rugby school. You sign up for the rugby team, right? Mm. And they've got a starting uh, scrum half. He was really good. I remember watching him play. He was good. And then uh, he missed training. So you stepped in as the scrum half. Mm. And then you, you maintained that spot, didn't you? Pretty well, actually. Yeah. You took him out of the team. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. So it can work. <laughs> yeah young prodigy. College coaches began to fantasize about Manning one day being the face of their program. Every school in the nation was suddenly interested in him. Stewart, who was Newman's coach when Odell Beckham Jr. was there, said this about Arch's recruitment. I was so blessed to coach Odell Beckham, and I thought that was crazy. I had no idea. At the time, Manning was six foot two, 180 pounds, and still growing. The sky was the limit in terms of what he could eventually become. With the high school football world now revolving around this rising sophomore, some of Newman's games started to be nationally televised. Their games became 
an what, absolute man? circus, with Manning, of course, serving as the main attraction. Before and after them, random people of all ages would approach and ask him for pictures. They had no shame, as one time, two grown men posed as working photographers just to share a sideline with Manning before being escorted off the field. <laughs> for almost any high school sophomore, these events would have been too much of a distraction to succeed. But Manning wasn't like most kids his age. He didn't spend time on social media, playing video games, or watching TV. All Manning really cared about was playing football and spending quality time with his friends or family. In regard to how he was handling the fame, Stewart said, The biggest thing is Arch is such a good kid. He's really handled it with a great deal of maturity. Staying humble and not letting it go to his head helped Manning put together a special sophomore season. He threw for just under 2,000 passing yards and 21 touchdowns while adding in eight more scores on the ground. Despite being named to the Max Preps sophomore All-American team, he still wasn't satisfied and wanted more. Stewart talked about how hard Manning can be on himself and that he's his own biggest critic. But these are some of the things that make him special. Another trait that makes Manning unique is that he's a total film junkie. It's rare for a player that young to watch a ton of film. Usually kids at that age care more about creating or watching highlight tapes than truly breaking it all down. But Manning couldn't get enough of the process and fell in love with it, so much so that it managed to shape the University of Texas coaching staff's perception of him on an unofficial visit. While in Austin during the summer before his junior year, Manning spent time with Texas head coach Steve Sarkeesian and other coaches in front of a whiteboard. After Manning accidentally left his notes behind, someone found them and gave them to Sarkeesian. Sarkeesian then called Stewart, saying it took their breath away and that it was staggering how much information Manning was writing down. Sarkeesian also told Stewart, I just want you to know that I've been doing this for a long time and have worked with a lot of quarterbacks. Even if I never get to coach this kid, the fact that I got to work with him today was phenomenal. It makes it all worth it. That's the kind of impression he had on us. Manning was well on his way to earning a reputation awesome. for himself on and off the I'm actually thinking Arch Manning spent a lot of time with quarterbacks as well probably <laughs> over his young life. He probably no, couldn't get, he probably couldn't avoid it, do you know what I mean? That's what I'm saying, yeah. At the dinner table, table with Eli and Payne just uncles, tell yeah. him name plays. <laughs> That's probably what it was, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. The field with the overall way he he's carried. probably getting like spoke like hyped up a lot though, isn't he? Really? Yeah, he, he will. It sounds be. like the, it. This, this school is it Newman? They said he did. Yeah, Newman. Beckham Junior. There, they both both the Manning brothers. Yeah. Uh, now now this kid, I don't know who else has come from there, but he's uh, obviously got a good football program. Yeah. Like you said before, it's it's living up to that name of, of, of the, the Manning name as a quarterback. Yeah. But his height and everything seems to be going the right way. Yeah. I thought you know I thought what might happen is he might be a bit short or something like that. You know he's coming in and say like, you know five five nine or five ten. Six foot two and still growing. Still growing. Yeah, it's good himself. He had every right to be full of himself, but instead continued to surprise and win people over with his down-to-earth demeanor. On top of that, he never stopped grinding to get better. As Manning's coach said, he enjoys the training, the extra work, and going in early. Sometimes I gotta remind him that it's a day off for a reason. He doesn't take it. He's expanded and got better probably than I ever could have imagined. As a junior, Manning passed for over 1,800 yards with 26 touchdowns and just four interceptions, while rushing for over 350 yards and seven touchdowns. In addition to being named first-team All-State by the Louisiana Football Coaches Association, he had established himself as the consensus number one overall recruit in the class of 2023. But the way the season ended had people wondering whether or not this was actually deserved. As a 2A school, Newman's regular season slate would be considered a cupcake schedule. The schools they faced stood no chance against a future Division I quarterback. The real competition didn't arrive until the postseason, and in the state semis, Newman was handed an absolute beatdown as Manning completely disappeared in a 49-7 loss. He completed just six of his seven 17 passes for 49 yards while rushing for only 15 more. The performance raised concerns about whether Manning had simply been taking advantage of lesser competition while playing in one of the lowest divisions and relying on his last name. As Mike Farrell, the former national director of recruiting for rivals, put it, if his name was Arch Smith, I think he'd probably be a high three-star quarterback. He plays a very low level of competition. He's, he's, he hasn't progressed. And when he has had to step up against other competition, especially in the playoff game where he looked awful, just hasn't translated. But people like Farrell voicing negative opinions about Manning didn't stop basically every program in the nation from trying to get him. And after a few years of this chase, with the clock winding down, some schools put on a full court press. Places like Texas were so desperate that they spent unfathomable amounts of money to try and seal the deal. For Manning's official recruiting visit the summer before his senior season, Texas rolled out the red carpet for him and eight other recruits that included airfare, five-star hotels, food, desserts, entertainment, and an open bar for parents. All in all, the Longhorn 
Osborne spent nearly $280,000 on the two-day visit. As crazy as that number may sound, it was totally worth it. Four days after the visit, Manning tweeted out that he committed to Texas. It took just six words, a hashtag, and a simple picture. There was no edited graphic, extended highlight tape, long message, or over-the-top ceremony. But none of those things are Arch Manning. As Stewart put it, he has such a good level of humility. He doesn't like attention, and he doesn't draw attention to himself. For Manning, the focus has always been on tuning out all the noise and just becoming a better football player. He could have rested on his laurels and been happy with being a great passer, but instead, he continued to put in the work. And by his senior season, Manning had the fastest straight-line speed of the entire Newman team. An anonymous major college football coach who watched Manning's film extensively said, he looks a lot like his two uncles, at least when they were coming out of high school, and probably has even better arm strength. He's definitely more mobile and always knows where he's going with the ball. The comparisons aren't fair to Peyton and Eli, but I also don't think that any of that phases him. As much as anything, his presence and composure or what stand out. Sound familiar? But after years of being compared to Eli and Peyton, Arch as a senior finally left his own legacy. In a single game that season, Arch broke Newman's records for career passing yards and touchdowns, marks previously held by his two uncles. It was a special moment from a senior year that cemented Arch as being way more than just their nephew. He threw for almost 2,300 yards with 34 touchdowns and just two interceptions while rushing for six touchdowns. Arch finished his high school career with 8,599 passing yards, over 1,000 more than Eli, and 115 touchdowns, 22 more than Peyton. He also added in 1,155 rushing yards and 25 touchdowns on the ground. Having risen to the occasion every step of the way so far, Manning will have to once again prove himself at Texas. He comes in with arguably the highest expectations in college football history. Not everybody is sold on him just yet. How good is so this kid? I mean, I know he's high school. I mean, you're going to college. We're going to see what you got. He's a Manning that comes with huge, huge expectations. Some people need to actually see him succeed against elite competition, not just tiny Louisiana high schools, before buying into the hype. But none of this uncertainty has stopped Manning from having the highest name, image, and likeness valuation of any high school or college football player. In fact, all the talk only contributes to his NIL valuation being a whopping $3.5 million before even playing a down of college ball. What's even crazier is that this number could be higher if Manning actually committed to building out his social media presence. But that number, just like his name, will be meaningless when Manning finally takes the field for the Longhorns. He'll have to prove with his play that he's worth every penny and bit of hype. His college coach believes that he's fully capable of doing just that. Ahead of Manning's arrival in Austin, Sarkeesian said he's extremely gifted. He's got all the attributes needed to be a good quarterback. He's 6'4", 225. He's got a great arm. He's a good athlete. He's got really good fundamentals. There's not a throw he can't make. He's got the desire, the competitiveness, the work ethic needed to be great at the position. Sarkeesian also said that Manning will get the chance to compete for the starting job as a freshman. He will have stiff competition with Quinn Ewers, who knows a thing or two about high expectations himself as a former number one overall recruit in the country. With a perfect rating from some recruiting services, only time will tell whether Arch just took advantage of a weak high school competition or if he'll live up to the name on the back of his jersey. Mm. It's going to be interesting to see. Isn't it? it will be, yeah. I don't know if this is his first year going into... Uh, how old was that video aid? I'm guessing it will be, though. Three months ago. Right, so this is going to be his first season going into uh, into Texas, freshman year. So it'll be a case of uh, let's watch him this year and see how he does. If he starts... Do you reckon he will be? I, do you reckon he will be? That, that other kid, who was it? Uwe's his name. Yeah. Um, he's got to be starting, hasn't he? He will do for the... like. If he, like, how many freshmen really start straight away? Do you know what I mean? I like, don't know. Someone, someone's going to have to let us know that. The freshman, is, it, is, it a, is it a thing where you don't get many freshmen coming in and starting straight away as soon as they've been sort of like selected to the college? Yeah. Because if they're doubting the number one quarterback freshman... Yeah. Who's also who's, big, Who else like, is going to yeah. come in and start as mm. a freshman? Mm. Be interesting. We'll keep an eye on him and see how he, uh, see how he progresses. We'll to, but he, looks, yeah. he looks the part, doesn't he? He looks like his he numbers, could be really good. His numbers coming out of Newman are better than what the, the other painted, painted brothers had. Yeah. And he's six foot, what was he, six four, two twenty five? Six four, two twenty five. He's got all the attributes, hasn't he? He has. Yeah. Hope he do, hope he does it. I mean he's come up from a, a, a very sort of privileged family, I guess. So he's had to, that's why he's down to earth, because he's had everything he's needed probably. You know. So uh He doesn't want to say anything too like because he's he's gonna he's gonna, be, he's gonna go mainstream whatever he says, do you yeah. know what I mean? And stuff yeah. like that as well. I just hope he does live up to a hype. He's probably media trained. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So yeah. I hope he does live uh, live up to his hype though yeah. and uh, turn it on for Texas. Hopefully, yeah. Let's see. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll yeah. catch you on the next one. Cheers. Cheers.